Welcome to the program. This is What's Your Story. My name is Catherine Mwangi here at the famed Sarova White Sands Beach Resort and Spa. And with their famed personality, their executive chef, Godfrey Oda. Most thank welcome you. to the show. Thank you. And thank you for inviting us to the kitchens of Sarova. The that sounds very Sarova. exotic. Really? Totally really. exotic. Really. Who came up with that name? <laughs> uh, it was well thought of. Oh. Uh, there are a lot of kitchens within the Sarova. Uh -huh. So those kitchens uh, that came up, we looked at each and every outlet, each and every unit, and we say, how can we be one kitchen? So that is how that name came. I love so it, it became the kitchens of Sarova. Sarova. And our audiences should know, we cannot be the executive chef of this Sarova group and not have you make us something, but that will come later. That will come, definitely, yes. uh, definitely. And it's your own composition. It's my own composition. I yes. cannot wait for it to know what that is. It will, it will, you know it when time comes. When time comes. Yes. So, Chef, your story is very rich, inspiring, and also very empowering. Just mm -hmm. reading what you sent us, it's no wonder we want to have this story, not just to inspire young people, but also chefs who want to get to your level, My level you know, yeah. those who True. look at people like you and wonder what to figure out so this is the opportunity to have that story um born in a family of 13 mm -hmm. raised by a single mom yes paint for us what your picture was like growing up uh my father really died when i was six uh here we are left the other children were already grown up and some were already married I remember my eldest sister, um, an age mate to, to the first daughter. Mm. Exactly age mate, born in the same year. So uh, when our father passed on, we were left with a mother, with a family that we had got only one brother that was employed at that time. So we didn't have so much to gain from the brother because he was also developing his family right. and really they were still uh, relying on my father when my pa father passed, mm. passed, passed on. Then here we are left uh, the three, I mean five uh, brothers, mm -hmm. the siblings, we are together. We had not started school during those days and here we are with only the mother. So. The mother took us to school when Muse Kenyatta decided that primary schools were, were free. Ah. You get, ah. that is where we started getting relief because immediately our father died. Then the following year, Muse Kenyatta decided that primary schools are now free. Oh. Now the people who are staying like us at home, yes. who could not go to school because you had to pay, I don't know, 20 bob or, mm. tw or 10 shillings, something. It was between 20 bob and 10 to 20 shillings still to, go to, expensive. To, to go to school. Those were in 1970s. Here we are. We go, we go to school because of that little leeway. Yes. We started learning. Wow. So it was between standard one to standard four free. So we knew that after standard four, we have to leave school again because we know my, my mother will not afford that. Wow. And we are five brothers. Yeah. Uh, something happened that uh, the brother who was left in Form 4 comes up and gets work at that time with the Kenya Post and the Telecommunications. I can't, uh, uh, I, that was a big thing that happened in our, our lives. Wow. After that, Clapperton went to, to be with, uh, with Kenya, Post of, of, uh, Kenya Post and Telecommunications. He rose to the level of uh, postmaster. And now we got the leeway of getting going to go school. So he educated all of you? He educated all of us. Wow. So you and all... the only thing that didn't happen is that we were not taken to colleges because of how much he had also, but we appreciated what after picking you from all that level to yes. form four. Yes. Then it was us now to go out and look on how we can proceed, yes. which we appreciated. I appreciate it yes. up, to, up to now. Then here comes, uh, I come to Nairobi. So before you come to Nairobi. Yes. Um, your love for cooking started at that young age. Now, because we were five brothers, yes. no sister, mm -hmm. our elder sisters had already been married. Yes. So we were living together. So it was our duty to prepare our own meals. 
So I liked cooking for them. Sometimes, just like that? Just like that. I liked cooking. So I got, uh, that is how, I, I didn't know what I was doing. I just knew I, I'm feeding my brothers. And that was it. So at night I could join mom in preparation of food. And I did not understand anything to do with the hotel industry no. or what I was going to do. No. Because what I was looking at my life previously was that in future, yeah. I might become a technician. I loved technicians. Oh. Because that is what I was developing to be. I love technicians because what happened in our market village, you'd go there and find somebody making radios uh -huh. and he's earning a lot of money. And the problem with that, them is that they were not straightforward. You give him a radio or a watch to, to mend. The following day you go there, the watch is either sold yeah. or it is not made. <laughs> so I was looking at that as a very lucrative uh -huh. kind of profession yes. that if I do it, I would be rich. Mm, but then you'd be honest. Then I will be honest. Yes. I will do it uh, frankly and do it with all my heart. Yes. Then here I come to Nairobi. Uh -huh. uh, I find uh, my brother, uh, the other brother who was elder. I stayed with him yes. for some few days. Okay. Then he took me to a place to just make up a casual job in a restaurant. Now that is how I developed to be a chef. When I got there, I found people who are cooking and they did not know how to write. Here, they could tell me to order them things, make the menus. They just tell me what to write. I don't know what I'm writing, but now I'm developing from this. Wait, so they couldn't write because they were illiterate? Or they, they were didn't... illiterate, ah. completely illiterate. Huh. That was around 86, 87. Yeah, so they 87. didn't have the benefit of an education like they you didn't. had? They didn't, but they knew how to cook. They could cook food for the tourists and they were enjoying I said, yeah. this is now the profession. That is how I picked my profession. Huh. Look at how it came. My goodness. So they could not let me go, even the casual work. Now that I was given the job permanently. Yes. Those days, there was nothing like, like uh, employment on a contract. No. You just given a job yeah. and you were given an employment letter. Yeah. That is how I was employed. So you write recipes and menus. So I would do them whatever they tell me. I don't know what I'm doing. Remember, <laughs> I, I just fresh from school. And this is what I'm doing. So I looked at it, I said, and these people were earning thousands of shillings, thousands and thousands. Uh -huh. My brother who was working in the post office was work, was, and is a postmaster, earning hardly 4,500. These guys are earning over 50,000. Mm. Wow. Then I'm saying, then this is the profession. This is what I can do. This is what I can do. Yeah. Because from the technician, I was looking at if I go to Nairobi, the job that I would do, I would go and work with breweries because people believe that breweries had a lot of money during those days. Yes. So if I did get that, yeah. I got this. Then yeah. I developed an idea. That is how I started. So when this you look in, yeah, when you look in retrospect, eh, you see how like your steps are so divinely ordered, yes. cooking for your brothers. Yes. Then you come to Nairobi to find something to do. Your brother connects you to a restaurant. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's just so, it's mind boggling for me. Yes. Because we, we never see um, how someone's gift and talent can translate into something so grand, like where you are now. And yet, speaking as a parent, because you're a family mm -hmm. man, um, majority value academia more than the talent, the things they see my child likes to do. Mm. What, what would you speak to parents, you know, speaking from your story, what would your advice be to parents in terms of there has to be a balance between academia and gift or talent? To the parents, I would tell them one thing. You see, if you have got kids, take them to school. Don't tell them what you are. You know, what we do, we tell our, our kids is what we wanted to be. You get what we wanted to be. We want our children to transform to our dreams. Uh, our dreams. Yes. And that is what spoils. Take the child to school, let them learn, and let them come out with their own dreams. And let them come up with their own career. It will be much easier than yeah. forcing a child, because you have gotten an A, yeah. go to become a doctor, a doctor yes. or a lawyer. Yeah. Or, they won't like it. No. They'll do it to please you, but they'll be unhappy. Yeah, they will be unhappy in the profession. Yes. Yeah, that is what I think should, should be. Leave them to develop themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Your work as a parent mm. is to support his education. It's true. And it's support true. him, aid him to get some dinner and lunch. Yeah, I hear you. So in your case, 
uh, you got to a point when you know you're writing for these chefs who could not write um, in an, and for them it's not because they're literate because they wanted to but maybe their parents couldn't afford to take them couldn't to school. Couldn't afford, yes. So then you decided you want this to be the path of my life. Yes. What then did you do? Now I started uh, by going back to, to college myself. Ah. ah, you had some money now to start to educate yourself? Yeah, I'm educating myself to be the chef. And the good thing with being a chef is that you don't need the education as such. Oh. To know how to cook and, and prepare things, you don't need education as such. You need to know what they are doing, like the monkey does what the other does. <laughs> you see, do what you see them doing. Is it? Yes, see what they are doing. If the soup takes 50 minutes, then also make your soup, follow the procedure and make your soup. Take 50 minutes, make your soup and test it. Uh -huh. Because everything you make, you must season it and test it at long last. Because okay. otherwise, yeah. it will not be food. Yeah. <laughs> it will not be food. Okay. And because I had the background of how to cook at home, so it was easy for me to see and say, yeah. okay. So you went to college? So later on I went to college. Uh -huh. I went to Kenya Utali uh -huh. for several, in fact, many times. I've been going there, coming back, going, coming out. Oh, you go to like, um, um, like elevate? Like, yes. yes. Really? So, so I come back. Uh -huh. And uh, that going to college alone does not take you to where you are. Because now where I am is on appointment and professional basis. Mm -hmm. How much you can do to manage people. Yes. But of course, I've gone even to Trathama University to do my management skills uh -huh. also. I, I also did that. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I've done a lot by the time I get to where I am. Yeah. How to manage people. Yeah. You manage over 100 and, and, and plus people in yes. the kitchen. That's a whole company. Yes, yeah, sometimes more because sometimes you, you handle up to functions, up to 10,000 at a certain point. Mm. It is not a very easy thing to do. Yeah. Uh, even if you have got the education, management skills, I think, are talents that, yes. that may be not easy to learn. Yeah. 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 You've worked with some of um, the biggest brands before you now landed at Sarova. You've mm. worked with some incredible people mm. and some wonderful places like the Horseman. You speak highly yes. of um, yes. Rolf, yes. the late Rolf. Mm. T tell me what um, inspiration you, he was to you. You know, you know Rolf. Did you hear about him? I interviewed he was, him. He was a tough guy. Very. But I went there as a commie chef, and I went. I came out from there when I was a head chef because of how I could adapt different several skills, how I could understand him, and how the most important thing, let me tell you, in everything in this profession yeah. is having the right attitude having the right attitude. Yes. You might work with very tough people that cannot, people say, it's not easy to work with. Mm. But you find it easy to work with them because of your attitude. Sometimes it's asking for something from you, some people would run away. You'd stand there and tell him, okay, sir, I will do it. Yeah. Or if I don't know, please teach me. Yes. And that is how I grew. Mm. The attitude that I had from him, he was, the, he, he brought my, he gave me the base the best of my career. Yes. Yeah, because we really worked together and he was promoting me every other time. Yeah. So from a commie chef, you know, commie chef is an entry level in the industry. Mm. Commie chef is an entry level. Okay. So when you work at, at, with such a person and then he sees some... Something in you. Something in you. Yes. That is what happened with me and uh, Rolf. And Rolf. Ro he was called Rolf yes. Schmidt. Schmidt, yes. Yes, he was called Rolf Schmidt. Yeah. That is what happened. And I grew there from... Three years I was already heading that particular executive restaurant. executive chef. Not the executive uh, chef. That was a restaurant now it's called, you are called head chef. Oh, head chef. Yeah. And it is, it was one of the classiest restaurants in Nairobi. Everyone It was, it was Everyone a, went during there. that time, that was the best restaurant. It is. Yeah. Yeah, it's That true. was the best restaurant. Yeah. So I grew from there and I was at a certain level. Then I said, I'm still too young to be at this top place. Because when I'm at the top, I may not get to learn from other people also. Oh, wow. So I checked away. I decided to resign. Hold on. <laughs> and, and, and move away. Because you were at the top and at you needed top, to know more. I needed to know more. I said, if I'm just here, this is a restaurant, 
I've got still a lot of life to live. When this restaurant goes away, where will I work? Uh -huh. So I went to seek for more talent and more knowledge. Wow. So you, you, are not, you left out of your own volition? Yeah, I just left. Did you know where you were going? Yes, I had looked for a place uh -huh. and I didn't want to be head chef again. I wanted to start again. From the low Not, not from the lowest, but middle. just the middle. So I got to a Fairview Hotel uh -huh. and I went there, I, I was working as a chef de party. Uh -huh. And what does that chef de party do? Chef de party means that you are a, a, a senior cook. Okay. Yes, chef de party, you are now a senior cook. Uh -huh. You can run a department. Okay. The way I was running that restaurant, now in the hotel industry, in the hotel setup, now you come as a senior cook. Okay, I see. So that is what I did. So I became a chef de party. Uh -huh. And little did I know that these people also will see something on me. In you, yes. What I, what I was there. So within eight years mm -hmm. working, I was appointed the executive chef again. So you grew up the ranks again? Yes, you I just grew, yeah, I grew from that senior chef to a junior shoe chef, to a shoe chef, to executive shoe chef, and then I was appointed. In fact, the executive chef, who was a European, was sacked, then I was appointed on his position. Uh -huh. Then after that, I got another job with Sarova. Now I moved to Sarova. Which year was this? This was in uh, 2008. In 2008, I moved to Sarova uh -huh. as an executive chef in their unit called the Sarova Stanley. Uh -huh. Stanley is a five-star hotel. I worked there for 12 years. Uh -huh. Then I moved here. Now this place I'm working now, this is my second year. To the White Sands. Yeah. So this is quite a journey. And at the Stanley, obviously, you worked with um, Shalinda Singh. Stanley. Shailender is, uh, is my boss. He's the director of food and beverage, which means he's handling both service and the kitchen. That is his duty. Mm. And then he manages every unit from head office. I see. And he visits us very frequent. Yes. And he monitors the production and the quality. Yes. 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 So that is what he does. Yeah. Shell is one of the people that has molded me up to now. Yeah. I give him credit on that. Yeah. He talks so well on food. When he talks, I keep quiet. Ooh. He's an orator. He's a good guy in whatever he does. Yeah. He's a special man, yeah. let me tell you. Yeah. He's a special man. Wow. Yeah. So that is how it is. I've worked with several people, several, uh, you know, I work always, I work under, I work under general manager. Uh-huh. Yeah, my boss everywhere is a general manager. Okay. So when I work with a general manager, there are all so people that I can say have groomed me in the management in and out mm. because them they run all outlets. I'm only in charge of food and be mm. I mean food production. I'm the manager for food production. Mm -hmm. But now those guys are managers for front office. He manages every outlet, yes. about 15 outlets that are within the, yeah. the hotel industry. Yes. So those are the people that, right now I'm with Mr. Msengeti, uh -huh. who is also a very good manager. He has managed for quite a long time yeah. also, yeah. different places. Yeah. yeah. I, I, in Stanley, I worked with, uh, with uh, Gashuru. Mm -hmm. Gashuru was also a very good manager. Yeah. Yes. Wow. And somebody does not just become a general manager no. because of anything. No. There must be something special in, you. in them. Mm. Yeah. You're right. In them. You're right. So if you were to sum for us, what, what is the role of an executive chef in a five-star hotel like this? In an establishment like this. Uh -huh. My role is to manage staff. Let me start from there. Make sure that the issues of staff and what they do is managed properly. The second thing is to do all the menus and make sure that the menus are, are well done. According, sometimes you do them according to what the guest wants. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you do your menus. Uh, like restaurants, we make our menus. Yeah. We have got a la carte menus. We have got special menus like uh, set menus. Yeah. We have uh, buffet menus. We have got also, like those buffet menus, some of them can be themed. They can be Indian. They can be 
Swahili, mm -hmm. they can be African menus, yes. they can be French, can be international menus. So all those things, you must make sure that when it is the day for Swahili, is it really Swahili? That is your work. Mine is to check the quality of what is happening within my establishment, within my unit. So I test mostly, almost everything, but not every day. Yeah. I sample. Yes, aha. Uh -huh. You know, you sample. After sampling three or four dishes from different people, because kitchen works as a team, mm -hmm. you find somebody doing beef today, and the sauce is one person. The following day is another guy. Okay. The other guys are doing soups, so you go and sample those, one of the things, then you will know that it is good. Ah. Then other days also your chefs can go ah. and try to taste them, see if they are okay, yeah. then it will be, it will run. Okay. And an establishment cannot run without you tasting what you make. Right. First of all, the chefs must taste what they are making. Yeah. They know I will taste, so they must cook a good food. If you don't taste, if you are not used to tasting, the quality of food, the of taste, of taste starts coming down. Yeah. That is the secret. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I must commend you for the food you have here. We, we have enjoyed ourselves completely Thank with you. the food. And I'm not just saying that because we're having this conversation. Thank you. you, you have you. great menus and even greater food. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. So, so yes, I can attest to what you're saying Thank about you. the quality. Thank you. So, Chef, obviously, like with your many years um, cooking, from when you were, how old were you again? Eight, nine? Yes. When you're helping mom? Yes. Um, is, she, is she still here with us? No. Okay. But at least by the time she was going by, home. By the time she was going, mm. I was the real man. I could take care of her every inch and everywhere. You know, they get old and they get sick yes. every day yeah. and they get this and they yeah. get this. I appreciated yes. the time that we were together. I appreciated. And she was proud yeah, of me. She you. was very proud of me. Yeah. Uh, because, and I eat when I know she has also eaten. That is how I treated her. I did not let her look for skumawiki in the bush. No. You made sure she has it. She has it. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. So, we are obviously at the kitchens of Saroba with the executive chef, Godfrey Oda, and you have some secret recipes of your own. Is it, could it be one of the things you've maybe made for a president once upon a time? I just feel like eating presidential food today. Wow. <laughs> It is, if I can recall uh, yes. the days that I served the... In fact, this is the part that I think is, the, is extra. Uh -huh. uh, in Sarova, I became the official state house chef, Katara. Okay. Official state house Katara during Kibaki, uh -huh. Kibaki's time. So every time we were going to State House to give that president food. And now after cooking for him for several days, you will know what he likes, his taste. So you cook as per his needs. Because you are not cooking for yourself. You are cooking for him to eat. Yeah? You, are, you, you see, when the guests need octopus, you have to give them octopus, isn't it? So you have also to learn what is what does my customer want? What does he, does, does he like? Yeah. And what is it that when I put it on a plate, he finishes it? Ah. And that is the beauty. If somebody eats half of the food that you gave him, start thinking, oh. it may not have been the best, hmm. or it's not maybe his best choice. Yes. yes. So we did that one for almost eight years, just cooking for the president. I used to have a chef that was allocated to him, who was walking to him throughout the world. They were going everywhere. Where he goes, he goes. Where he goes, he goes to America, he goes there. He goes to those Indo Indonesian countries, he goes. He goes everywhere with the president. Yes. He goes everywhere. Wow. So it was a wonderful time for... You S even. For Sarova. Yes. Uh, Stanley. Yes. Because we handled such a massive kind of work. It's amazing. It's just your world is so fascinating. It's creativity, it's art, and then all of that is judged on the spot. You then I have a family. <laughs> and then you have a family. Then I have a family <laughs> who have very little 
hours with me. I only arrive home at 11. Can you like such a husband to be Takes your... a very patient be, wife. Very patient. Yeah. And that is what Miriam has been. Oh. How long have you been married to Miriam? 30 years. Oh, Lord. Wow. So now as you're cooking for us, you'll be telling us the secret of your long marriage. <laughs> the, sh the conversation has to shift. <laughs> It has to be, we need to know how uh, you have been in this such a busy industry and such a stable home, mm. how to both balance. But that's a conversation we'll come to. And that means you cannot go anywhere because you know we need all the marital help we can. From the famed, highly respected chef, Godfrey Oda, the executive chef of the, the Sarova White Sands Hotel, Beach Resort and Spa. We're here in beautiful Mombasa. It's super hot today. But we're having a great time. So Chef now will be making one of his secret recipes, maybe something he's made for a president or a dignitary or a diplomat, who knows? I'm about to tell you. He's about to tell us <laughs> when we come back. Don't go too far. <laughs> Welcome back from the break. This is What's Your Story. My name is Catherine Wongi here at the Sarova White Sands Hotel, Beach Resort and Spa. We've been having a great conversation with the executive chef, Godfrey Oda, famed, highly respected and esteemed in this industry. And he runs a whole organization in here in the food production department with over 100 people cooked for presidents and dignitaries and diplomats. And he's about to cook for the What's Your Story team. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll get the chance to enjoy it first. So, Chef, it's really over to you. What, what do you want to make for us? Now, today we are preparing an uh, aged beef medallion. Okay. Uh, with the red wine foam. Okay. Uh, grilled vegetables. Uh -huh and uh, parsley potato. And this is your creation? Yes. I'll be here watching as you cook, as we talk. Do you have someone who's coming to assist you? Yes. OK, she, yeah. please come, invite come her. Hey, how are you? I'm good, and you? Good, Karibu. This is Chef, Chef Grace. Grace. Chef Grace, Nice, yes. OK. Uh, we are going to present this meal. OK, okay. Yes. by all means, proceed. Yes. <laughs> so we are going to start by putting this pan on. Uh -huh. As we prepare the beef, we season the beef. Uh -huh. So why did you call it aged beef? It has been kept for 21 days. Does it mean it tastes better? It means that it's the best. Uh -huh. In the terms best of, of flavor and taste? Yes. I will season this with salt. OK. We rub it a bit so that it gets uh, completely in. You turn it. Our pan could be now hot. hot. OK. Then we use corn oil. Corn? Corn oil, yes. Oh. It's a vegetable oil. Uh-huh. I never heard of corn oil, by the way. Corn oil is, uh, is made from corn. We start our cooking. OK. Remember, I've only put salt for only the time salt, being. Only salt, yeah. Only salt for the time being. Uh -huh. It will cook for maybe two minutes on this side, two minutes over the other side, because I also don't want to overcook it. Okay. I want to give it time to really moisturize. I will oh. put it to rest, but I, the time is coming when I will put it to rest for some few minutes as I cook what goes with it. So the total time of cooking is only four minutes for that it, one? There is, yeah, I will cook it for four minutes. It depends. You see, when you're cooking meat, meat you cook with the darkness. The darkness is either rare or blue. Blue is just turning it, it doesn't even put, tap tap, and people eat it like that. Then there is rare. You can do it medium to rare. You can do it medium. You can do your meat well done. Yeah, like mine, very well done. Then you won't, uh, it is up to you any, anyhow. It's up to you. You can do anything you want with the meat. Yeah. It is all good, depending on what you want. Other people just like it rare. Yeah. Other people like it medium. Yeah. Other people like it. Blue. Blue. Today is the first time I've heard of blue. It's the most rare. It's like something that you just touch fire on. That's it. That is it. 
Then we see how. So, chef, will... do you cook at home? Uh, people ask me that question a lot. But you see, you also don't do what you are doing at home. What? So I don't take my work to at home because I will interfere with other people's work. I am turning it. <laughs> hey, that that this is how it looks. Was good. <laughs> eh, okay. So even chef, even when you have a party, you don't even like. Oh, Mrs. Zouda does the thing, eh? She does the thing. She's a good cook also. <laughs> She's a good cook. I didn't see that coming. That was a good one. You didn't, you? didn't see that. No, no, I didn't see that. <laughs> Now, as this one cooks, mm -hmm. I will try to add some garlic. Uh huh. Some few garlic. I can even put all of it, no problem. Then I'll put some shredded onions. Mm. Hey, chef, you've added whole garlic. Yeah, because I don't want it inside my sauce. Oh, but it's I also just very need, tasty, I, I right? I just need, what I need, I need the taste of it. I don't need uh, the whole thing. And this one is rosemary. Hey, also whole. Yes. So what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to give this meat a good taste. Is that why you didn't do... You only did it with salt because you were coming to do this. To do all of this. Ah. Then we add pepper. So because we have only done one side, let us turn it and get the pepper also over the other side. Oh, I see. What cut of beef is that, Chef? This one is a, is a fillet, ah. a beef fillet. Beef fillet, okay. Yeah. Then. I put it aside because uh. the fire is a little bit too hot. Yeah. Then I add butter. Don't worry. Don't worry about that. Uh -huh. Oh. So is, do, is any of your kids interested in cooking, chef? Not until now. Okay. The grown-up ones yeah. are not interested. Maybe the, the younger ones, I can see. Okay, you can see some signs. Some signs. Ah. So they come to see me. Uh-huh. In action. In action, yes. That looks so good already. Chef, butter hainoneshi. <laughs> uh, remember there are some people who are looking to be fat. <laughs> some people do not want it. Uh -huh. So, it will depend. Uh -huh. Now, after this, mm. I would like to transfer this meat onto this board right. to rest. What does resting help with? You see, from here, we have hit this meat and all the juice has gone at the center. Of the meat? Of the meat. Oh. When it rests, mm. the juice will, will come out again and spread. Uh, like, levelize, the, 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 it balances the meat on all sides on all sides. Then I will take this back. And do you know what I want to produce from here? No. A good sauce for it. Hey, using the same... Uh... The red wine form. What's that, chef? This is red wine. I'm making red wine form. Wow. I will see what that looks like. Is that red wine also available locally, the one you're using? Yeah, this one is Mara, it's uh, a South African. It's ah, just bought. I see. Yeah. At the same time, uh -huh. I will do the vegetables and, uh, and the potatoes. These potatoes are called Parisian potatoes. Uh huh. Yes. So Grace will help you there. Yeah. And that wine, now, the aroma now is hitting me now. Huh? Mm. Good to hear that. <laughs> then at the same time. So Chef, what's your favorite food though? Do you have a favorite? I, I make a lot of food, so I don't know which one. 
And I've you enjoy never, all of it? I've never identified which one is good and which one is this and that. Yeah? You enjoy all of it? Because I cook it well. So what do you enjoy eating at home? What I enjoy eating at home is local vegetables. Like managu, terere? Yes. My wife knows how to make them so well. Tell us so, what you're doing there. So what I'm doing here, I'm just heating the vegetable, preheating the vegetables. There's water in there? Yes, there is water. These are the vegetables. So, so that's that, how you steam them, eh? Yes. So I will, I will toss it. Uh. I want to roast these potatoes. They are called Parisian potatoes. Parisian, OK. Yeah. So I will do this here. Chef, how did those potatoes become round like that? They are molded. I have a molder. This is a Parisian scoop. If you is want smaller like one. for ice cream? No, this is very different. This is called a Parisian scoop. Uh -huh. This is a, a, a smaller part and this is a bigger part. So I've used the bigger part to, Where? to mold them like Are that. Are they available locally? You can go to the kitchenware in Nairobi. Uh -huh. You will get. So chef, mm -hmm. married for 30 years, eh? Mm -hmm. Can you tell us something that has kept that marriage steady, stable and moving? I think one thing that keeps marriages alive are forgiveness. Oh, I like that. You keep on forgiving today and you don't forget that you should forgive. Otherwise, all people have mistakes, isn't it? Hey, just forgive. Yeah, even let me go. That one has just, that's a knockout. What do you call those knockouts? That is so powerful. <laughs> that is so powerful. Just forgive. Every time, just forgive. And you will uh, keep your marriage forever. Mm. Everybody has got a weakness. Mm. Mm. Forgiveness is the key. That is the key. That is what keeps the marriage. <laughs> so these Parisian potatoes yeah. are almost done. So I will leave them there for a, a short they while. They are done, chef? They are almost done. I also have some fire here, so they are just heating Cooking up slowly. A, a little bit. But I will add some butter to chef, you seem make to like, it brown. Why is it chefs like butter like that? What Unfortunately, today's, today's meal hey. had got a lot of butter. I want to finish up this sauce. Okay. I want all this onion inside. I can also finish my potatoes and vegetables. Ah. This is salt. Uh -huh. Chef, do you have an, a favorite ingredient? Spice. The major ingredient in cooking mm. is salt and pepper. Why do all chefs say that? The major ingredient. Without, pep without salt, there is no taste in food. Yeah. You can put all the spices that you want. Yeah. But of course, I like thyme also. Ah, at least. I like thyme also. Okay. So, chef, do you ever have time to unwind? So, a how glass do of you? Wine. How do you? Oh, a glass of wine. A glass of wine, red yeah. wine. Yeah. It's just good for me. Do you enjoy like conversations? I'm a debater. Hey. Okay, so, so sometimes we argue about so many things. <laughs> you enjoy arguing. So <laughs> I wanted to finish up this sauce. What is that you're putting? Cooking cream. Okay. Hey. All is done. Uh -huh. Now I just need to plate. You see, it is oozing a little bit. Yes. Yeah? It yeah. looks beautiful. Now I just need to plate. Now, yes. this is the time where we have gone to. Okay. This is how far we have, we have come. I will give the guests this food like this. Yeah. I won't give it from this is the back area. This is from the back. But you give it from the front. When you are presenting, those things are also there. Very important. Yeah, eh? so we have got seasonal vegetables here. We have got asparagus. We have got some uh, carrots broccoli, uh, some cauliflower, and then the Parisian potatoes. And the 
and the Aged. medallion medallion of beef is the main thing it looks uh, amazing i need to taste that food so this is <laughs> how far we can go it is uh, amazing it is beyond amazing from where i'm looking at it eh? i need to taste every single ingredient so here <laughs> Ooh, yes. Your medallion, the aged medallion of beef. Yes, this yes. this is something else. That is how far we can go. It's beyond amazing, and you've done it so fast. That is how it is done. You know what you are doing. You did fast. Why are you waiting and people want to eat? <laughs> hey, chef, you know your work, eh? The long hours you work, everything. Do you like have a fitness regime? In fact, let me say that now I'm not thinking about any other thing. I'm thinking of the kitchen, kitchen, kitchen. Uh -huh. And then uh, I retire. Maybe within a few years I will retire. Then okay. I can have a small restaurant for myself where I train people. I just train people. Yeah. But I can take care of some small number of people yes. for lunch or dinner. Yes. Because it's in me. I've done it for 30 years. Yeah. It would be unfair for me to start opening a garage at this time. I hear you. How, how many people have passed through your hands? I, I mean, can't count. But they keep on calling me every day, Chef, I got a job in the United States. Thank you, Chef. I got a job in Dubai. Thank you, Chef. What does that make you feel? Nice, just feel nice. Yeah. Just make feel nice. Yeah. And many more are coming up. Yeah. Because of uh, training them right. The right way. Yeah. Okay. So enjoy your meal. No, no, no. Don't go too far. We are not done yet. I have one last question for you. But what's a kwanza nini? And then, do you, like now, they are meeting like this. Are you, are you judging how I'm eating? Like. No, 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 no. Uh, now it's up to you. <laughs> Now it's purely up to you. Mm, 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 mm. It's purely up to you. I love asparagus. Mm. This is medium. I didn't push it well done the way, but... No, no, medium is good. Mm. I'm not seeing blood. <laughs> mm. Mm. How do you like it? It's excellent. Mm. <laughs> It's a huge meal, yeah? Mmm. This is so good. This is so good. Look at how everyone is looking at me. <sighs> Chef, God, I have the privilege of being cooked for by the man who cooks for dignitaries and presidents. You are welcome. You are all welcome. Chef, speak to up and coming chefs in your, you know, people in your industry who especially post-pandemic, that really crushed a lot of people. It's a bit many people. L people lost their jobs, especially in the tourism hotel industry. And now it's just when we are starting to come back up. And still, it doesn't mean that most have found their footing. For this industry at the moment, we have gone through a lot. Many, many people have lost their jobs because of the corona virus pandemic and the advice I would give them is that let us still be careful about what is happening around let us continue wearing our masks let us continue observing the Ministry of Health uh, protocols let us keep ourselves safe avoid going to these crowded places try to be yourself at a certain point and think well because it is that that would give you life tomorrow. I couldn't have said it better, you have said it all. And the thing that um, really counted for me today, something that you said struck, especially with people in the workforce, is just have a good attitude. Your, have a good attitude. Your good attitude just helped your managers help you, you know. That's so good. on top of everything you've said, that for me really stood out. And of course, your great conversation, your British dry jokes, <laughs> which I totally enjoy. <laughs> which I absolutely have fun with. And obviously incredible food. So thank you for hosting us so well. Um, and we wish you all the best with Welcome. your aspirations. Welcome anytime in White Sands. Thank you. Thank you. We shall hold you to it.
Mm-hmm. Okay. Prepare to get good food. Oh, we've been getting it. We have been getting it. But thank you. And thank you, Grace, for helping as well. Okay. To you watching, Asante Nisana, uh, the Sarova White Sands Hotel, Beach Resort and Spa. Thank you to the management that has made all of this possible. And of course, the kitchens of Sarova under the incredible leadership of Chef Godfrey Oda, who's just shared his inspiring story. If you missed it, find it on YouTube. You'll find it there, and I repeat on Tuesday night at 10.30, I think, 11, 10.30 to 11 p.m., you'll find the story as well on repeat. For watching tonight, enjoy your holiday season. It's December, it's holidays. That's why, you know, we are getting stories like this that inspire and obviously putting some food in our tummies and enjoying that. So today I've learned corn oil doesn't make you fat. Butter maybe doesn't also make you fat, but you know who cares? The food tastes really good. <laughs> Until till next week, ciao. <laughs> <laughs> Located along the pristine white sandy beaches of Mombasa, Sarova White Sands Beach Resort and Spa is a luxury and adventure beach hotel. Our beachfront location makes it the ideal place to relax and enjoy all that the Kenyan seaside has to offer. Sarova White Sands Beach Resort and Spa prides itself with 335 guest rooms and recreational amenities including 5 outdoor swimming pools and a sauna. Sarova White Sands Beach Resort and Spa has the finest world-class cuisines from the lavish pavilion restaurant buffets and Lido Lounge's speciality seafood and the a la carte Minazi Cafe. Looking to unwind? The resort has three exquisite bars to experience as the sun goes down including an in-pool bar and the beachfront's Coco's Beach Bar. For the ultimate relief therapy, Tulia Spa offers a wide variety of wellness options and foot reflexology with magnificent panoramic views across the Indian Ocean. Also perfect for family getaways, children can enjoy exciting activities at the Angels Playground in the care of the Ozone Kids Club. Sarova White Sands Beach Resort and Spa is the place to be in Mombasa.